Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all well today. So today I want to show you a new console that I picked up just over a month ago now. Uh, I got this from an eBay seller who has come across a lot of brand new consoles in the box and they're selling them off relatively cheaply. Now I've got this for £30, which is an absolute bargain for a brand new console from 1990 in the box. You can't argue with that at all. And it's a console I don't know very much about and a console I've never had any interest in buying before. But because it was cheap, and I've also been watching a fellow YouTuber's channel quite a lot who's a big fan of this system and it's kind of got me interested in the console as well and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a try and see what I think because there's no harm in £30, pounds. you might as well just buy it and see if you like the console. Now the console I've picked up is the Amstrad GX4000. Yeah, not something you'd probably expect me to buy. <laughs> but yeah, I've been watching Chris Novabug for a while now great channel and he loves this system and you know he will sing the praises of this all day long and I've seen some of the gameplays on his channel which really got me intrigued it looks like a really decent little machine and I thought you know what 30 pounds brand new in the box from 1990 you can't go wrong now it is a European system it's not a UK console so it does come with a 2 pin plug but that's quite okay because all you need to do is just get a standard shaver adapter which will cut the quid any electronic store or eBay Amazon wherever you want to go and you're away, you can play it no problem at all. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to unbox this console now. We'll have a good look around the system, see what it's all about. And then we'll also do some gameplay of Bernie Mugger as well. Okay guys, so this is the Amstrad GX4000 console. So as you can see, it's a very interesting design that they came up with. Nice cream colour, got a nice curvature at the front. A sort of venting design on the sides and the back. And a really nice purple power switch there. Like the cartridge slot and of course the Amstrad logo proud at the front. I actually quite like the design, it's not that bad, it's small, um, it's different. This was obviously competing with Mega Drive at the time and then the Super Nintendo came after this, but I quite like the design, it's nice. You've got a little power light there, there's a pause button as well, very clicky. Now if we look at the front and the ports that it has, you have the 3.5mm jack, which is for your headphones for stereo output two controller ports there for the standard Amstrad GX4000 gamepad and then we have an analog joystick port which I assume would be for the old Amstrad CPC joysticks uh, if I'm wrong please correct me but I assume that's what they're for there we have what looks to be an Ethernet port now from what I've read online that is actually used for light guns it's for an external source according to the manual so if we go around the side so you've got a really nice ridged effect I really like that and we come to the back really nice plethora of ports here we've got a 5 volt uh, power supply and 11 volt power supply now the 5 volt and this connection here which looks like the back of a mega drive those are both used for the monitor the Amstrad monitor now, if you're just connecting to a normal TV you just put in the normal power supply that comes with the machine into this 5 uh, 9 volt sorry or 11 volt as it says in the manual because it's European into that connection there and you have a brilliant RGB SCART output which I find really fascinating they didn't go for a standard Amstrad output that goes to SCART, like most consoles do, they have their own outputs like PlayStation, Sega will have that one, and then it will go into a SCART from there. Now they just went for a straight up SCART connection, which I really like because it just means that you can pick up the console and use any RGB SCART that you have lying around the house, which is fantastic. Now this switch I'm not entirely sure about. According to the manual, this is a sound switch. It only goes left and right, and I'm not entirely certain what the purpose of that is. I can't find anything in the manual to explain that. So Chris Novabug, if you're watching, please let me know what that's for, mate. And that is your standard, it's UHF in the, in the manual, but it's your RF connection basically, just your aerial connection. And then underneath there isn't really much to show there, uh, it's just the usual, we've got venting and obviously the information about the console and some feet. <laughs> Exciting thing. But overall, I actually kind of like the design, it's a nice looking little system, it's not too big, it fits under the TV well. And from that angle, it looks really cool with this nice curve at the front, and I really do like the, the power switch there as well. So that's the console. Now the joy pads are pretty standard, quite small, obviously this was aimed at kids so you know being an adult now I've got bigger hands so it makes the pad look a lot tinier and it's very square, very NES or NES, um, D-pad doesn't feel too bad actually it's, it's quite a nice resistance on it, um, buttons are nice and clicky, you can hear there, so yeah pretty standard Nintendo ripoff, very nicely done I thought. Um, so far I've had a go on it and it's not bad at all. Now, the games themselves come on little cartridges like this. And this is Bernie Rubber that is a packing game. 
So quite a nice design, very basic. Uh, small cream cartridge, just a standard label on this, you know what the game is. And that of course just goes in the top of the console like so. There we go, a bit tight, but there you go, it's brand new. <laughs> and there you go, and it looks quite nice with the cartridge in top, I think. Now the power supply that comes with this one, because it is a European unit, is this big power brick, and it is two pin, as you can see. But all you need to do is just use a shaver adapter, which you can buy from any electronic store, so that's quite straightforward to resolve that issue. So there you go guys, that is the GX4000 console. Now let's go and have a look at the game Burning Rubber. Okay guys, so this is Burning Rubber. Now as you can hear from the music, it's actually really, really good. The sound output of this console is quite impressive for this one game. So I'm interested to see how other games are going to sound in the future when I play them. Here we go, this is the game itself. So as far as I understand, this game, you just keep going around the track. There's no actual end to the game and the night cycle will come through, the day cycle will come through. And you're just kind of just racing around the track and just I'm not really entirely sure what the purpose of the game is. I know that I have heard oh that's tight. If you crash, it, it can make you so you can never win the game. I don't, mean, I don't know why that is. So the first time I played this when I got the console, I wasn't too bad at it, I got quite far. I watched Retro Dave play it when he got his. Dave has got history with the console because he had it when it was the first system he ever owned, so. He was a lot better with this game than me. <laughs> he managed to get quite far in it. Hit the brake a little bit there. Uh, it doesn't tell you your position, does it? No, it doesn't. So the sound effects, because it's a car game, yeah, they can get a little monotonous when you're accelerating. But it controls quite well. It's quite smooth. The controller feels really good in my hand. And for an 8-bit console, the graphics actually look really nice, I think. Okay, so it's a qualifier, so here we go, prepare to race. Let's move over to the middle lane so we can get, a, get ahead. All right, try and straddle the lane a bit. There we go. It would have been nice had they left the music in the actual game as well, because I think the music on the menu is absolutely fantastic. It would have sounded really good if they'd have left that in the game itself. Oh, hit the brake a little bit, trying to accelerate out of the corner because it's getting a bit tight. But nonetheless, it looks really nice, and I like the way it goes up and down like that to try and give it a, sen a sense of the track movement. Interesting pitch on the back, on the sides there. I don't know if that was the developers. Oh, God, slam the brakes on tight. Oh, shit. I have crashed before playing this. I didn't get very far. I flipped my car over, which wasn't the best. <laughs> I like the background and all the mountains, I think that looks quite nice the way they've done that. The old ocean logos, they're always a good thing to see. Right, there we go, got through the checkpoint at the start. I know from watching Dave play this, it can get quite dark at certain parts here. It's starting to go already, the night's starting to come in. Oh, yeah, right, I'm on a roll now, here we go. I don't know how many opposing drivers are on the track with me at the moment. Oh, I knew it, I knew it. I couldn't hold the brake. Damn. That's a proper over the top though, you actually face on the right there. Oh look, he's smoking, he's gone. <laughs> Amstrad logos. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised when I first got this machine and unboxed it because I did not really know what to expect. As I say, back in the day, I was a Commodore kid in the 80s. Amstrad was something I wasn't really familiar with. I only had one friend who had an Amstrad CPC. So the console was just completely aimless and I had no idea it existed. Oh, you son of a bitch. And I've done it again. And that was because I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> I mean, obviously they do look a little rudimentary compared to modern games, of course, but I don't know, I think it's quite decent. It's not a bad little attempt, especially for a launch game, just that comes in the box. They did a pretty decent job to keep you interested. There are some really interesting games that came out of the system as well.
Oh, I'm gonna do it again and I'll shit. I was trying to hold the brake down, it just weren't happening. Should we go full force in the corner, why not? No, I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay, well I think we'll leave the gameplay there, you've got an idea of what it's like. Guys, that's Burning Mother anyway for the GX4000. Okay guys, so there you go, that is the Amstrad GX4000 console and a brief look at Burning Rubber, the packing game. So overall, I really like the system, I think it's really good. Uh, interesting little bit of hardware and the game is really fun as well. And not bad at all, you know, £30 for a brand new console that I've never played before. I thought it was well worth a shot and I'm glad I did it. Now of course, if you would like to buy one, there are still some available from the same seller on eBay. Excellent seller by the way, for a UK seller they're exceptional. Very friendly, packaging was bang on, really, really good. Now, if you want to buy one, just click on the link up here. That will take you to their eBay store. And at the moment, they're selling them £39 or best offer. As I say, when I bought mine, it was £36 or best offer, and I got it for 33 So they are open to offers, they're a really good, friendly seller. And it's definitely one that's worth checking out if you've never played one before. Now, there are a few other games available for the Amstrad that look really interesting. They're supposed to be really good ports. I have watched a couple of gameplays on Chris Noble's channel. Very impressed with those gameplays. And yeah, I'm not really looking to buy them anytime soon, but in the future, I probably will pick up the odd game here and there. I'm gonna do, I'll do a gameplay and show you what, the, what I think of them. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please let me know what you think of the GX4000 down in the comments. And please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.